How can you support somebody going through a divorce? I think this is such an awesome question and such a thoughtful question. And it's not like when somebody dies and you bring over a King Ranch chicken casserole and call it done, right? Supporting a friend or a family member who's going through divorce, it's not easy. Because you've got to understand this person is going through a roller coaster. They're going to tell you today they may be up here. Everything's going great. Everything's awesome. Like I just won this hearing, whatever. You may talk to them the next day. Oof, they're down in the valley and oh no, everything is terrible. I'm definitely going to lose the kids. Everything is over. I'm so scared. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. The next day you may talk to them. You know, they may be midpoint like, well, you know, things are all right. So you you know, supporting someone who's going through that roller coaster is a noble and wonderful thing. And I think the main thing that you can do to be supportive to someone going through a divorce is to bring a listening ear without judgment. Because look, your judgment isn't going to help anything. What you would do if it was you, well, I would never X, Y, Z. If you feel sassy in what you're saying, it's probably not the right advice to give because what they need to hear is, hey, you're doing a great job. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. Like you can do this. Just being willing to listen and listen to them without judgment because everywhere they go, people are judging them. Their lawyer's judging them. The other party is judging them. The judge is judging them, obviously. Um, they feel like they're under a microscope and they're literally just trying to do the best that they can. So from you, what they need is someone who will listen and someone who isn't necessarily trying to give all of the advice in the world, who isn't necessarily trying to change them or give their two cents, but is just there to support and listen without judgment. So they have a safe place to go and feel heard and seen in the middle of this crazy storm. And like, look, remember, your job is not to rescue them, and they may want you to do that. It's not what's best for them though. They may call you and want you to gossip or to complain or to help like save them from this problem. I recommend that you don't. Be supportive, be firm with your own boundaries because their divorce is not like your divorce. Like you don't wanna take all of that on you too or you won't be able to support them through the duration. But being consistent, and reliable, thinking of them for things like at holidays, right? If a holiday is coming up, his or her world or their world will be looking very, very different. Maybe at Easter, they used to do this huge family celebration and this year their kids are gonna be with the other parent and they've got nowhere to go. Invite them to your house, check on them, call them, keep them included for things that are happening because it can be very, very isolating. It is, period, not can be. It is isolating to get divorced because nobody truly understands exactly what you're going through. But if you show up without judgment, being supportive and making sure and including them in regular life and things that are going on, that will go such an, a long, long way. One more thing you can do too is include them in times when they have the kids and times when they don't have the kids because they can start to feel like their life is bifurcated, right? They're two parts. They're them with children, like mom, I'm thinking of my own self, like mom Hannah versus newly single um, on her own Hannah. Those two people, it's hard to get them on the same page, right? Because especially if you've been married for a while, I was married like nine years, I guess, when I got divorced, like becoming, coming to grips with these two realities being one person was rough. And I remember appreciating so much people who like, when I had my kids, we could hang with their kids, we would do crafts, do stuff like that. And then also they would include me when I didn't have my kids, even if they were having family dinner, like asking, did I want to join? Or other single friends, now that I kind of could like go to dinner at 10 o'clock at night, inviting me to do that part two and having patience with them as they reform this new identity. Um, it could be frustrating, I think, to be on the receiving end. I'm sure it was when people were friends with me and I had some really great friends in that process because I was reshaping everything about who I was and to be there to observe that when like the Hannah they knew in the beginning and the Hannah in the middle and the Hannah on the other side, those three people have, you know, don't have all that much in common and that's a lot to go through. But if you, if you can be there and show up and keep showing up, that person when they're on the other side, even years later, 
will remember it with such gratitude and such fondness and such appreciation that I guarantee you it's worth it. And here's the thing, it may be you later, you may need that same support. And I believe what goes around comes around. So if nothing else, that way maybe they'll help and be there for you. If something like divorce, death, all those hard things in life that happen, you can model for them how to show up and then they will likely do the same thing for you someday too. So it's a win-win.